Hello Mechanics! Today I'm going to be showing you how to get the average color between two RGB blocks in Scrap Mechanic Number Logic. So here you can see I have a red block, it's one of those RGB number blocks. And here I have a light red block, and then also a lightish red block that's sort of in between the two colors. Now normally you would think it would work this way where you can just put in the two color blocks, add them together, and then divide by two to get the average color. And this does actually work but only sometimes, only sometimes it works. Let me show you what I mean. If you try to get the average color between red and white, you actually get orange, and that's not actually the correct color. That's not how it's supposed to be. Or if you get the average color between red and cyan, you come out with this sort of yellowish green. That's definitely not correct. But for this combination for red and light red, it seems to be close enough. So some of you might be asking like why this is, why does it only work sometimes? And the reason for that is that you can't actually use this method to get the average color between two color blocks. I mean, you can. <laughs> you can, but you can't. So over here I have some number logic inputs, uh, RGB inputs, that I can very specifically choose the color. And over here I think I have cyan. A very, sort of a dark cyan. And it does seem to be doing a pretty good job of getting the average color. And over here I should have a red color. Also kind of a dark red. And this is actually the average color between red and cyan. Uh, as they're sort of like opposite colors on the color wheel, they should come out with a grayish color. Not that yellowish green stuff that we saw. Or if we go ahead and pop this up over to white. Sort of a grayish, but it does get the average color between the two colors. So the reason why this works correctly is because I'm inputting very specific values into the color blocks here, and they have to be divisible by 16. So this sort of lazy method that only sometimes works, it actually works when the color values are divisible by 16 and there's an even number of steps in between the two color values. So just to give you an idea, the red channel for this color has a value of 160. It's, it's a multiple of 16 and the rest have zero. And this one has 160 for all of them. Or I can just reset this one to be a cyan value where it's zero, 160, 160. And so then that is what allows you to add the two values together, divide it by two, and you get the average color. But if you're using colors from the paint tool, they are very specific color codes chosen by the developers, and they're not exactly multiples of 16. You can't easily divide them. That's why this method of wiring for the average color doesn't always work, and sometimes you get the wrong color. So, how do you actually get the right color every single time? Well, that's what we do over here. So over here, I have another example of a setup that finds the average color between two color blocks. And we are using the RGB inputs, but we can have any random color of our choice, literally any color that we want. The difference this time is that we're getting the average value for each color channel, red, green, and blue, and then combining it into a new color block. So you might remember that uh, red and cyan supposed to make a gray color, not this sort of greenish puke color, gross. So doing it this way to get the averages of the red, green, and blue channels individually, and then putting it in a color block, this is what allows you to actually get the correct color every single time. See, that's red and cyan getting the wrong color, and this is red and cyan getting the correct average between the two color values. So if you're playing around with number logic and you're creating colors with RGB channels, this is how you get the average color between the two color blocks if you already have the information for red, green, and blue. But what if you don't? What if you don't have that information? What if you have a color block and you painted it some random color from the paints tool? How do you split this color into red, green, and blue channels so that you can use it in a method like this to get the average color? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you right now. This is how you can take any color block, any painted value, literally any color that it is, and you can split it into its RGB channels and even get the values for it right here. You can see it's very much cyan with 44 in the red channel, 230, 230 for green and blue. Let's go ahead and paint it red. There you go, so you can see it's all in the red channel with a little bit in green and blue. Because it's not exactly pure red. So if you're not new to number logic, then this is pretty simple stuff. You're just gonna get the division remainder from 256 for the blue channel divide it by 256, and then do the same thing, division remainder for the green channel, divide it by 256 again, and then get to the division remainder again from 256 to get to the value for the red channel. And that's because of the way that color codes work in number logic. As a matter of fact, in all computers, uh, you might have seen the hexadecimal color codes and all that. Well, if you didn't know, those six digit hexadecimal color codes are actually split into two digits each. Each of them are 16 bits, which 
Two of them together is 256 bits of information. So that's why we're taking division remainder for the blue channel. That's why we're dividing it by 256 to do the same thing for green and then doing it again for the red channel, where each time we're sliding it over to get the information for the next color channel. If you're completely new to number logic, you don't actually need any of these number blocks here. These are just for displaying what the color channels actually are. This is just to show that this is actually 256. So you don't actually need any of the stuff around here. The important parts that you need are just these six blocks right here. This is all that you need to split apart any color block into its red, green, and blue components. As a matter of fact, you don't even need this plus block here. You could just use the color block itself. Uh, but I just put this here to sort of make it look clean, and I can always replace this with something else later on. So, a nice little module right here for me to use. So, the actual color value itself is connected down to this blue division remainder. And you gotta remember, all of these blocks here, the five other blocks that isn't the plus block, we're connecting a black 256. So these divisions are going to be dividing by 256, and these division remainders are going to be getting the remainder after dividing by another 256. So for the blue one, we're just getting the color value and getting the division remainder after 256. Now this part you probably don't want to mess up. We're taking the actual, like the full color value, not the stuff from the blue one, but the actual full color value, and we're dividing it by 256 first, before doing the division remainder by another 256 to get the green value. Again, you probably don't want to mess this up, but we're not using this division remainder for the next stage. We're using this full value that was divided by 256. We're dividing it by another 256 again to then use it for the division remainder for the red channel. You've got to keep in mind that all of these divisions up here are using the full color value, whereas the division remainder is going to sort of cut off the other color channels. So it's not going to transfer the full information for the full color, and that's why we get the individual color channels. And then just for me to verify that I've done it correctly, I've connected these division remainders into another color block to make sure it comes out the same color. So anything that I paint this, it's going to come out the exact same color as it was before. The input is going to match the output exactly. And it's also going to give me the information for what that color code even is, but in decimal form. So the red channel is 34, green channel is 34, blue channel is 34. And here you can actually get what the color codes actually are. So the purple from the paints tool is actually 117, 20, and 237. Mostly blue, a little bit of red, almost like half as much red and a tiny, tiny bit of green to brighten things up. So what if we went a very light red? We're gonna see an increase in all these values. Almost max blue, a little bit more red, and a lot more green. So it's a very, very bright color, almost white. As a matter of fact, let's try white. 238 all around. Not quite the maximum white, like 255. I think we can actually do that too, though. We're gonna combine maximum red, maximum green, and maximum blue into a maximum white color block, and that should be 255 each. Yep, there we go. Oops, oops, well that just left the maximum red and zero, zero. So this is what pure red looks like in the game. So this is how you use number logic to take a color block and split it into its individual components. So depending on how you build your creation, you have this option to take the average color, or you have this option to take the average color of whatever the color might be, could be anything that you painted. Some people find it easier to design their color with the three channels uh, and number logic. They can just input the numbers directly. See, like the numbers that you get from here, you can just input it directly here. And other people prefer to just take out their paints tool and just use the colors that are available in here. Because yeah, it's a lot easier to just paint it. So let's show you then this stuff in action. You can actually see I have one of it over here. There, th this is just a black 256. So here's the input block for one of the colors, the left side. There's the six blocks that uh, gets me the color channels. And this is just the outputs, just to make sure that everything's working correctly. I wired it up all correctly. Same thing on this side. We got the input over here, 256 on black. And the six blocks over here that split it into red, green, and blue. So then just like over here, just like over here, where we're taking red, green, and blue values, adding them together, and then dividing them each by two, before recombining them to get the average, the correct average, not this uh, not this incorrect average over here, but the correct average. 
we're doing that exact same thing over here, where we're taking red, green, and blue from anything that we paint, literally any color that we paint. Right here, we can get the average color. So the red components from each color, they're being added right here together and then divided by two to get the average red value. Same with the green, we're taking the green, adding them together, dividing it by two to get the average green color. And then the blue component, we're taking whatever those blue components are, whether they're zero or 255 or whatever, adding them together and then dividing by two to get the average value. And then we have the average color for red, green, and blue to put into a new color block. Anything that you paint, you can get the average color in between them. Look at this, look at this actually. This is white, white paint. Well, we'll do it with red, we'll do it with red the lightest red color that there is in the paints tool, and we get an even lighter red because we're mixing white and the light red. It has to be even lighter red. We can do it with orange too. And this way we can actually get new colors. Look, 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 look at this, look at this, look at this. We're gonna do it with red and orange to get a reddish orange. This color doesn't exist in the paint tool. It's in between the red and the orange in the paints tool. As a matter of fact, let's get, um, yeah, let's get cyan. Ooh, that's kind of a nice color. Let's get cyan and blue to get, yes! It's the, it's the modding color, it's the modding, it's the blue bearing paint color, it's the blue, the modding blue. The reason why the blue bearing was even the color that it is, specifically because it was a color that didn't exist in the paints tool, so that's the color that sort of like represents modding in Scrap Mechanic, is just because it's a color that doesn't exist in the game. Not, not originally anyway, so. But really you can see it's just the average color between the cyan and the blue in the paints tool. This sort of sky blue color. I think it's a really nice color. So what is the average color between purple and magenta? Wow, oh my goodness. I like this color, I really like this color. We can even do color combinations that you would expect 100%, like the average color between red and yellow is in fact orange. Or what about that cyan and red that we're doing way over here? We're supposed to get a gray color. Not this greenish color, but we're supposed to get a gray color. And even the colors from the paints tool that aren't exactly multiples of 16, we can get the correct average color. Doesn't matter if we use the dark versions of the colors, we still get the gray. Because these are opposite colors on the color wheel, they sort of cancel out and you're just gonna get a gray anyway. Or what about a green and cyan? Yeah, there you go, look at that. Another color that doesn't exist in the paint tool because it's in between the two colors. Very cool, very cool. So what you gotta remember to reliably get the average color between two color blocks is to get the color components separately for each red, green, and blue, add each of them together. So red is added with red, green is added with green, blue is added with blue, and you add them together and then you take those and divide them by two each. As a matter of fact, you can even combine more colors. The same way that you would get an average of many, many numbers, you can actually add together three blocks, four blocks, five blocks. You just have to remember that number for when you're dividing. So if you're adding together three different colors, you're gonna divide by three. If you're adding together four different colors, you're gonna divide by four. And as long as you did that for each red, green, and blue, then you're gonna get the red, green, and blue averages to put into a new color block. And that's how you can get the average color for any colors that you're combining together. Literally any of the colors that you're combining, you can get the averages. And this is probably a little bit of a useful logic if you didn't know. You can take any color and then find out its red, green, and blue components individually. You can extract that information from any color. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this entire thing and put it up on the Steam Workshop as average color logic for you guys to play around with. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I hope this video has been useful to you. But that's it for today, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!